few people ask me about how we add superfood powders, fruit powders, vegetable powders into formulations. So I'll cover this for you in this short video. Now, basically the biggest problem you've got first of all when adding these sorts of powders to your cosmetics is they're usually intended to be added to foods. So usually they'll be water soluble, but not necessarily always. So the first thing is test them out in a little bit of water and see if they dissolve fully. Now you will find that some of these fruit or vegetable or superfood powders simply won't dissolve fully at all. And that means you have some little grits in your finished cosmetic product. And that may or may not be the look that you're aiming for. Of course, if you're making an exfoliant product and you've got other abrasive particles in there, you won't notice it. But in an emulsion, having these little gritty particles could be a big problem. So you need to check that first. The other thing is, of course, they're foods. So they're a great microbial source. Make sure your finished product is preserved well. Uh, again, make sure that you're picking a preservative that suits the final product pH. Make sure it's a very good broad spectrum preservative action. And make sure it has a sidle activity so that it will kill off microorganisms in the formula and introduce throughout the shelf life. Being so nutrient rich, well, that's why we want to ingest them. But of course, in your personal care products, they're then a fantastic food source for microorganisms. So preserve the product carefully. And you can also think about some packaging aspects to help with that preservation. Like airless serum dispensers, for example, compared to open neck jars, which means a lot of consumer interaction during use, which could boost extra microbial contamination and risk. So just be very careful of that one too. Another thing to be aware of is that adding these fruit, vegetable, superfood powders could have a big impact on the pH of the formula and also pH compatibility. So when you add these food ingredients, some of them are quite acidic. Some of them could be quite alkaline and you could find that it causes a dramatic pH shift in your formula such that it can destabilize it or reduce its shelf life. So you will need to run some stability checks to make sure that it's stable in the formula. You can add it to the formula, test the pH before adding it, test the pH after adding it, and see how this influences the pH of your formula. If it has a big impact on the pH of your formula, of course you can buffer it at the time, but the other thing you need to be aware of is where it does cause a big shift in pH, it can also cause some long-term stability impacts. So also be aware of that one. The final thing I just want to point out is how do you know if the addition of these materials will actually benefit the skin? Some of them have quite a large molecular weight so they may not penetrate the outer epidermis. So if you're adding them for marketing claims, then that's fine. Um, make sure they go into the formula and they don't impact the stability and appearance in an adverse way. But be careful about what claims you start to make about their use when applied topically onto the skin because applying a substance topically doesn't necessarily have the same effect as when you ingest it. So just be aware of those points. That's how to formulate with these materials and a couple of things to be aware of. And also be careful about what claims you make. Make sure they are compliant with cosmetic claims requirements and make sure you hold any evidence for any claims that you make about what they'll do for the skin. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.